How you do? It's Michael again. Sorry if I sound a little smashed, or very much so, because uh, I had behind myself a very extraneous coding session to finally finish the relay card project. I mean, that is the ultimate relay card project. And I had one problem left, or say one task left, and this is um, realizing implementing the USB support. Since the card is uh, two interfaces, an Ethernet interface and USB, I had to finish the USB support. And this video is a little about uh, the problems you will have if you use a USB connection in conjunction with a um, UART bridge that will convert the USB protocol, which is a packet-based, into the UART protocol, which is byte-based. And now we uh, here we have the problem. If you do it on Ethernet, you get a, a data packet, and you can send multiple packets and all. And what you get is always a packet, which is a unit of data. Problem is when you read byte by byte, uh, if you think about it, yeah, well, you can see the problem. You don't know where it starts and where it ends. It's a timing problem and this is what makes uh, this kind of a USB connection quite crummy and um, unreliable. And also it takes your nerves away. And you might sound like I do if you are trying to do this right. I mean I'm doing this for quite a couple of years now and still I haven't figured out quite exactly the way to do it, but I think this time I'm very close since uh, I did a little analyzing on the bus so and I have an explanation at first let's get into, get into the theory of this at all how would you do it? the AVR has a, an interrupt which is the user RX receive interrupt um, since it reads it bitwise uh, once a whole byte, or say a transmission unit, which is a byte, or it's 9-bit, uh, is read, I store it into a buffer. And also, uh, I, I remember how many bytes I've read already. So, you see, um, if you did it without a flow control line, so you could never determine here uh, at which point this would be done. So, this is where the flow, uh, where the flow control line comes into the game. The flow control line, CTS line, uh, will trigger another interrupt, uh, a toggle interrupt. And this is actually done by the read command. We'll see the PC side in a short while. And, well, it says, right, it, it's an indication that the command you sent to the card is now, now finished, no more bytes, and we can process it. And, of course, send a response, which... Uh, is done here. Um, in theory that works pretty well uh, but you have these timing problems. Let's have a look on, on the PC side of things. That is the AVR firmware and that is the PC side. <clears throat> At first we send the write command which is implemented up here uh, I'll show you later. And well we we'll send the whole schmuck uh, to be transmitted over USB. And then, after that, we want to read a response. And here comes the problem. I say, well, put a certain amount of data bytes into the transmission buffer, which is uh, the USB stack implementation of the operating system. So, it always depends on, uh, well, what your system is currently doing. It depends on the bus itself. It depends on how many devices are connected to the USB bus. How many traffic is there. And all that. Which makes, makes this a little awful. Since um, while in the code, of course, this is all uh, very sequentially. The actual timing uh, is a different matter. Another problem is... <clears throat> Okay, let's start with the write command implementation, and then comes the FTDI lib, and beyond that, the USB lib. I mean, this is very complex stuff, and it's no wonder this doesn't work correctly. 
it's the timing. So we have actually we have two flow control lines. The one line says for the device that the computer uh, well is ready to to receive data, and the other one is for the device itself to say to the computer, "Hey, uh, I'm ready to receive data." And this is that one. And yeah, you can say pole modem status, and this will read the flow control line. And this loop does wait until the line is uh, indicated to be ready. And then after it is ready, I mean, if we don't wait, uh, we had a problem like um, when the card is well processing the data you sent, and while it is doing that. You send more data into the same transmission buffer. Then the buffer will be corrupted and this whole thing will go to, well, smoke. So this is why we need this line. To, to indicate whether the device is even able to receive data. So, and then we just write the data. But there's another problem here. This isn't an actual um, serial line. If I say and this comes in the read command later. The read command, uh, oh, well, is it? Where is it? Here. Says, sets the RTS line to high. As a, I mean, it sets it to active. I mean, it's uh, actually it's inversed on um, on the controller, and it's all very confusing. Uh, <laughs> the system has to send a USB packet to the device, which is um, in this case this FT232 device, this USB bridge I'm using, it has to, to pack up a USB packet, send it to the device. That takes a certain amount of time and you never know how long it could take. Could take up to, I will, on my system it takes around, I say, 80 milliseconds, which is a freakingly long time to set a flow control line. I mean, freakingly long. And this is all done asynchronously. I mean, here, uh, the packet USB packet is just created, and then later, by the operating system, is sent on the bus while your program runs on. So you see, well, this is all very sequential. In reality, it looks a, li a little different, and that is what makes this thing so well delicate. Also, you read data, and then you get a, a certain amount of well, a number of bytes, and then you never know. Yeah, is the data comes there more? And the solution I found is just to say, I wait a certain amount of time and, and retry reading. And if, say, 100 milliseconds have passed, then I should make this less. Later I make it less, so I tune it a little. And no more bytes were coming, I say, that must be it. After that, I say to the card, okay, that's it. I'm not able to receive any data anymore because um, I'm not listening to you anymore. So, you see, the flow control lines here are essential. And they are the problem. If this was an actual serial device, it would be working in no time. But this is USB. And that's the problem. So, now, let's look on what's happening on the bus. Well, you see these probes, uh, differently colored, uh, directly connected to the ABR, which was quite some nasty work. So, the green one is the actual data line, the RTS line. And I was happy to see that at least the transmission itself uh, wasn't corrupted. Because every one of these green blocks here is a transmitted byte. And uh, I have a tool, I mean, this is my tool and the relay control uh, program, the code you have seen just a minute ago. And this is what I sent 845705. Uh, 845705. Uh, and you can also use this nifty uh, bus packet list, which will show you timestamps and the data. So this is very much correctly so. But the red line, this is the CTS line that has uh, will be controlled by the PC to say to the card, hey, um, I'm done sending the command 
So please re uh, create a response, which opens up another problem. Um, you have to wait a certain amount of uh, time for your device, for your controller that is, to create the response. Uh, this makes it all time intensive and it all makes it, well, time sensitive, you know? And you see the, the actual problem here. The line is pulled down after just two data bytes were transmitted. So uh, you have to understand how this comes. Uh, the data itself is being transmitted in, I suppose, a single USB packet, which is delivered to the bus, to the device, and the device translates it into these, as, uh, into into this signal, which is, well, a serial line, uh, a UART. But this is another data packet that has to be received by the device in uh, in order to to pull this pin down. So this is what makes the flow control line, essential as it is, on a USB device, it sends the whole thing to, well, it makes it ludicrous. I mean, the, the flow control line is actually there to, to make the application, the device, uh, well, sensitive about the timing. But the timing is what's screwed up here. And this is why I say USB, at least if you use it with a USB bridge, it sucks. Uh, it sucks at all. It's slow and the timing is unpredictable. And this isn't really getting a way better if you use a native USB controller. It's expensive, it's, you only have the large packages, and it creates a certain amount of other problems, but it still will work better. better. I think uh, by analyzing this and, well, make myself a sort of a formula to send this packet here, the flow control line, on its way, just right, so, you know, it pulls down here, and it has to pull down here after the transmission is over. So, I have to find a way uh, to do, send this flow control command uh, correctly in, the, in a timing that will prevent it from ever pulling down before the transmission is uh, completely sent and it should also not uh, take forever to pull down after the data is sent because another command could come in, data could be corrupted or lost so if this was a real good flow control line it will would pull down right here after the transmission but uh, let's see how we'll do this so I think you see the problems you have here. But once I solve this, not only will I have a, a hopefully a, re a reliable way to make USB devices, uh, although I'm tending not to make any of those anymore because it sucks. Well, then this relay card project is finally finished. It took me half a year and it was quite a lot of work. And, but now it's, it's really working quite fine. Uh, probably still a couple of bucks I haven't seen yet but all in all it's working good and with this it will be finally feature complete anyhow I squeezed the firmware in into the last few uh, bytes of the controller so there is no more space to implement anything um, I, w I was planning on doing um, an extension board so you can attach more relays, but then if, you, if I had to implement this, I need to throw out something else. Maybe it's remote control code. This takes up a lot of space and it's not so important, to, so it can be dismissed or something like that. So you see this pro uh, project, while it is feature complete, might still not be finished. Um, it has a certain dimension on it. So. If you ever use uh, a USB bridge, a uh, UART bridge, never forget the flow control lines and be certain you understand that this is uh, about timing and timing on USB is something that is sort of, um, I'd say, hardly predictable. It is predictable but you have to add some grace time and you have to add enough time such that it can't happen way too early like this. I mean, here it pulls down the line after only two data bytes were sent. And of course, um, the blue line, which is the transmission line, 
it stays down because the AVR isn't even able at this point to create a response because it's the same register and while data is being read you cannot just send anything and this is why this whole thing doesn't even work send no response at all and it, in the end your tool says sorry no data and that's it so USB in my opinion stinks but thanks for watching even if I'm smashed after a long coding session and see you soon